All right. We are live. Hold on one second. This off. Notify everyone. Everyone. Shivotov. Still in Passover. We're trying something new today. We're trying something new. We're going to try to uh, do TikTok and uh, Clapper at the same time. So let's see how this works. If it works. Start live. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's an option that says don't nude. Okay. I'm 18 and over. Yeah. Accept. Okay. It's the first time I'm going live on Clapper. Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. It's interesting because Clapper, you don't need to have a thousand people to go live on Clapper. Um, notify. All right. Hey, my friend Reuven put me on Clapper. Um, told me this is the backup for TikTok in case it goes down in America, but even if TikTok goes down, we could still access it if you have it installed on your phone or whatever. You have an Android, da, da, da. it's not such a big deal. But yeah, I don't want it to go down. Let's see. Clapper, what does it say? Adult 17 plus. Oh, first it said 18, now it's at 17. Let's see how many people we can get on Clapper. Live. All right, guys. Um, yeah, like we do all the time. Judaism's better. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine. Let's see. Why have Jews been expelled from every nation they have ever lived? When do we acknowledge it's them? <laughs> And who wrote this? Biden's panties. Interesting. Can you elaborate on why Judaism is better? It's easier for me to wait for someone to hop on. Okay, so the name of this live, if most people don't know, on, on uh, Clapper or YouTube or whatever, because they don't see this banner up here, is Judaism is better. Um, yeah. So Judaism is better. For those who just hopped on, guys, we're doing something different. We're, uh, we got a Clapper. This is like this new app. I'll tell you, it's it's kind of easy to get views there i think because it's new uh so if you put up any video and the videos i've been putting up are considered like um plagiarism whatever i'm plagiarizing myself uh because it has the tiktok watermark so it doesn't get that many views but still it's like each video is like boom boom like tons of views yeah so i think people are picking up to the notion that uh tiktok might be you know Removed in America, whatever. Silly. All right. Welcome, Layla. Okay, let's see. So, we're in the midst of the Passover week. Boy, Passover has become like Yom Kippur almost for some people. But it's funny. I never I never missed bread so much. I can't wait till I could, you know. And, and, and it's... You could have potato bread. Most people don't know. I mean, there's a lot of breads you could have um cornbread i guess if you make it yourself pasta mm -hmm. hold on i have two screens in front of me what's up man how's it going what's up dude how's it going chilling chilling bro all right. um i don't know you were kind of talking about something so i didn't want to cut you off about your no, topic this shows about anything religious and slightly political yeah. okay so you know i just had a question about um like interracial dating um mm -hmm. if you will sure. so my brother is um so we're indian we're an indian family from india okay. and i have two older brothers both of them are dating jewish girls Mm. um okay you know and i love them like my like my sisters i already consider them they're not even married yet i already consider them my big sisters um you know i would i would 
fight for them. I would kill for them. I would, I would defend them. Do you, but, and my family, um, they accept them also. My mom, my dad, they all accept, you know, but her side of the family doesn't really advocate for my brothers as strongly as we do. How do you feel about that? If your daughter, or if you have kids, I don't know if you do, but let's say you have a daughter and she brought home an Indian guy or someone who's not Jewish. Right? We're not Jewish. We're, we're not Jew. You know, we're Christian. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's and for sure, it's a religious thing, right? If your brother would become a Jewish person, um, then it wouldn't be an issue, right? I mean, I'm surprised if your family's Christian, they don't have an issue with your brothers marrying someone who doesn't believe in Jesus. So it really depends which family is more devout, because that's the one that's going to win. So uh, if they don't accept them, they may consider becoming Jewish. So what part of India are you guys from, origin? Um, north. So my mom's from Delhi. Uh, um, and I'm my dad's dad. from... Your dad's from where? My dad's from, like... Kashmir. It's this really, it's this yeah. region right now. They're in conflict. Sure, sure. No, I just came back from India in February, yeah. three weeks. And then last year I was there for three weeks. And this year I'm going back. And yeah, there's communities, there's Jewish communities in India that uh, we support. But yeah, I mean, it's not a racial thing. It's a religious thing. I mean, in India right now, they're pretty radical Hindu. Uh, they don't, because we go there to perform conversions and we got to do things secretly because if they find out that we would convert a Hindu, they'd probably nullify our visa. Uh, so well, Indians are we, just passionate. Yeah. We, we, we have a very strong relationship with Israel. India and Israel's relationship and, and the, the Judaism, and then I guess there is a religious majority, I guess so you would be, there's no state established religion, but it would be Hindu majority based. We get along with this. We, we have a lot of similar, um, you know, we have similar moral and principles. We have similar, mm. you know, friends and we have similar enemies. You know, we do. We have similar enemies. Um, yeah. So, you know. I mean, it's kind of weird if her family is not religious and she's not like she's clearly not a religious Jewish person if she's going to date someone who's not Jewish. And they still advocate for her marrying a Jewish person. That's kind of bigoted, right? I mean, it's similar to a Christian, you know, who's not religious. If their family um, is upset that they're not marrying someone ethnically Christian, right? I mean, because we're not dealing with religion anymore because no one here is religious, right? Uh, between your brother and 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 his girlfriend. So, um, I mean, I'm not for... Look, if people are planning to have kids, they should marry people from their same ideology. Uh, just because it's going to cause problems later on. Women in particular typically become religious, more religious as they become older, you know, and there's going to be a fight on how are you going to raise the kids? So this is something they got to figure out now. So you don't support race mixing? No, it has nothing to do with race. There's Jews in India, right? But but you said you don't like if they have kids, like you said, it's going to bring problems later on problems. That's what you said. Yes, but not because of race, but because of philosophy, ideology, religion. Oh, okay. I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, so like if your brother's converted to to Judaism or the girl's converted to Christianity, it wouldn't be an issue. But being that they're not religious at all, why are the parents even caring? Um, so uh, the problem is when two irreligious people marry and then someone becomes religious, and this is when divorces start happening. So I think it's better to marry someone of your same ideology. I don't think atheism is is an ideology just because it's like kind of nothingness when it comes to you know yeah so yeah yeah, it's not racial at all i mean jews there's black jews asian jews you know i mean from china i know yeah there's indian jews yeah 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 so it's in india it's the same thing i mean if if a if a hindu girl wants to marry a muslim boy like she's gonna have to convert Right. And I don't think you can convert to Hinduism, but um, you can. Yeah. So it's yeah. I mean, it's not race. It's not race. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I I personally, you know, I I don't my, my girlfriend right now. She's not Jewish. Um, she's Roman Catholic. Um, so we're not like entirely like she's not from the same region. But, you know, my parents like raising three boys it's like 
you know, they just want that their their stance on it is they want you to be happy and they, they care more about, is she going to support you? Is she going to be your rock? Is she going to be able to, you know, financially support, morally support? That's what they think. And that's, that's, that's what, that's what I think the true definition of love should be. I don't think love should be based off of, you know, external, you know, kind of, you know, stuff like that, that I don't think that stuff has any value. I mean, of course it's important, right? Religion is, it's, it's important, but I don't think that that should spearhead the, what love should be. I don't think I, I, in, in this day and age, no, I, I, uh, I sympathize with that, but that's just not, you know, I mean, it is that way. Unfortunately, I'm not saying love, uh, but it's not enough just getting married. The key is to remain married. So um, especially when you're dealing with kids, you guys have to come from the same ideology. I'm also against like Democrats marrying Republicans because of that. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. If the people aren't going to have kids, then it doesn't matter. I mean, I think divorce without children, it's not a big deal. But divorce with children is a very big deal. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure you could sympathize with that, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, if someone's Trump and hates Biden, you know, and, and the other person hates Biden, I don't know how they're going to get along, right? It's well, just like, well, yeah, I, I can't exactly sympathize with that because my dad is, is, is diehard Trump. My, my dad has make america great again flags he's merch my mom hates trump she's super fiscally on the left uh, socially on the left my dad is is extremely far right very very far right so you know and then they've been happily married with three kids for over 40 years Uh, um so i think people can see past their differences and be happily married um I mean, I don't know if you're you, you're married to somebody who probably has a lot of similar, you know, moral yeah, and really, cases. Clearly, there's exceptions, but I'm pretty sure you would acknowledge that in the vast majority of the cases it, to be of the same philosophy um, it, is it's, important. It's, yeah, for sure. It's not the make all be all, though. Uh, well, I think it's it's one of the most important things, although if your parents are from India, their marriage was arranged, right? No. Oh, no? Okay. So that's interesting. No, those are the South Indians that do that. That no, I think, It's an extinct practice. It's, it's uh, to arrange marriages in the Christian and Muslim and Sikh world. It's still, that's the vast majority. Yeah, the vast majority of Indians, I mean, have arranged marriages. Not in this day and age, though, brother. And oh. it's, it's dying out. It's, it's in extremely religious suburban, mm-hmm. and it's in, the, in the suburbs, you don't see it. In the cities, you don't see it. You see it in these communities that have, you know, 500, 600 residents, and they don't travel outside of their communities, and they don't have money to pay dowries, and, and so they don't have dowry money, so they, they that's what they do. And these also families that do these arranged marriages, they're getting arranged marriages with, and, and this is in India, I can't speak for, you know, but in India, it's they're getting arranged marriage with their relatives. So, you know, not exactly the most. Right. Well, it's because of the caste, because it goes to remain in the same caste, or like not of a lower one. Yeah. Okay. All right, bro. No problem. But for stopping by, consider becoming Jewish. You know, I mean, Jewish women and Indian women have a lot in common. They're both like semi difficult. From what? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, cool, man. Jay Hindustan, Jay Hind, Jay Javan, Jay Kisan, Jay Bhatt. Yeah. Long live Israel. All right, bro. All right. Peace. I'm gonna take it easy. All right, guys. It's a nice compliment here. He he blesses Israel. I bless India. Uh, okay, someone who hopped on and hopped off. So yeah, guys. Yeah, no, it's not really about race. I guess if someone thinks that you can become Jewish, then it becomes all racial. But that's not the case. And I think that's one important thing we do with the show is let people know. I think the obvious. It makes my job sort of easy. I wish I would learn more than I teach. Um, I feel more confident in, in dishing out information. So I mean, I'm constantly trying to battle to get new information, you know, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. This thing's being recorded. But, yeah, um, if the average person thinks that you can't convert to Judaism, then, they, well, I mean, heck, I let the banner do the talking, right? Judaism is better and you can become Jewish, right? But if you think that it's all blood-based, and then uh, and someone discriminates in 
in the guy's case uh, that the girl's family is not approving of his brothers, then it, it does seem racial. But once you realize that you could convert to Judaism, then you realize, oh, it's ideology, philosophy, it's religion. It's, it has nothing with race. Okay, do you still practice the Book of Levi? I don't know what the Book of Levi is. Is that the Book of Leviticus? Um, the Book of Leviticus, Vayikra, is not practiced till we have another temple. Let's see. Let me go through some of these questions. Sorry for ignoring them. Let's see. Jesus stuff. Jesus, Jesus. Okay, again. So I want to be a Jew. Okay, so go to your local synagogue, preferably a Orthodox synagogue, and uh, inquire within. I tell you to go to. Well, I guess it's not too late. Yeah, I mean, go to show this Shabbat, meaning you know, in seven days. Let's see. Talk about converting without a community. Talk about converting without a community. You know, um, I guess you could do it as a, as a, the truth is most rabbis won't convert you without a community. It's not a requirement according to Jewish law to have a community. There's even a statement in the Talmud that talks about someone converting from amongst the Gentiles from like not within the borders of Israel. And according to Rabbi Kiva, he accepted him, Rabbi Kiefer was one of our big sages, right? Now, he accepted him so much as a Jew that he said that even if this individual would violate the Sabbath after converting on his own, this person would be liable to death penalty. So, yes, it's a thing, although no one really accepts it nowadays. Uh, you can do it. I mean, I'd convert you. But most rabbis don't. And for good reason, in the sense that there's no point of converting to Judaism if you're not really going to have a community. You could have a relationship with God, with God without being part of the Jewish people physically. Um, it's just nice when like-minded individuals get together to do good on this planet, right? Just living in a community, you know, assuming your community <laughs> cares about other people who are, aren't Jewish. Um, it's to be, like they say, an orlegoyim, to be a light, right? Just let people know when you do nice things that you're Jewish and you're doing it because you've been sensitized by Torah values. <clears throat> Torah values. <coughs> Hold on. All right. I don't want to talk about Pesach Shani. I mean, it's not anyways. I mean, Pesach Shani is like, if you miss the first Pesach, there's another, you know, time for you for you to eat the lamb. Pesach Shani doesn't really encompass, I think they do it nowadays. There's a Seder nowadays, but I don't think it's, it's, I mean, yeah, because what are you missing? There's, there's Pesach, Pesach Shani means the second Passover. If you miss the eating of the Passover lamb, there's a second chance for you to make it up. But that doesn't entail the Seder, right? Uh, but there are people who in some way do some sort of mock Seder. I have to look into that. So, okay, do you practice Exodus chapter 20 and 21? Just post what the practice is because I have two phones and a computer here. And if I try to type, I'm going to knock one of them over. Let's see. Jesus died and rose again for you, Rabbi. Wow. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I really do that you feel that, you know, um, yeah, it shows that you care. And that's, it's, I think if people cared more on this planet, uh, heck, <laughs> then that we could focus on the important stuff instead of just debating religion, which is what? Enjoying life. Hak Sameach. Oh, Hebrew Hammer. Hak Sameach. Well, I hope Hebrew Hammer you are uh, practicing like a Sephardi Jew Passover, so you can enjoy the delicacies of bamba, kidney oat, or whatever, you know, rice, beans. Okay, do I need a middleman to convert? What's a middleman? Oh, you mean someone who, to, to witness a conversion? According to Jewish law, as it's understood today, yes. It's interesting that Talmud doesn't mention witnesses. Um, well, it does. Let me see. The Mishnah doesn't mention witnesses. The, 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 the Gemara mentions two. Uh, I hope we do three nowadays. <clears throat> what do you tell a Noah that says Jews are supposed to be priestly, to be a priestly nation to them? Well, I I wouldn't tolerate anyone if I wasn't Jewish um, calling me a Noahite, just because it's it's for. for for people who don't know, the Noahide movement is a movement where people are encouraged to keep seven Noahide laws when they already believe that the Torah is true. 
um, instead of converting to Judaism. So don't let them call you a Noahide, right? Um, th- that by definition means like a, a non-Israelite, non-Jew. You're in a covenant with God if, you, if you've accepted the Torah, right? the, the commandments in the Torah. You may not be halakhically Jewish because you haven't converted to Judaism, but uh, say, okay, call me a Jew in transition. Don't let them identify you as a Noah. Like, you know, but, so you're Israel and I'm not, says who? So uh, what do you tell them? Well, tell them to man up. Man up, Israel. You know, the heck? I don't know. Encourage people to become Jewish and make sure that uh, you in some way replenish the riffraff. Because there's people who... who they may be halakhically Jewish that don't really do much for the Jewish people. Okay. I'm Ashkenazi, though. Yeah. Oh, so this idea is sort of a misconception of, amongst there. Only because you're Ashkenazi doesn't mean that uh, you have to not eat kidney oat on, on Pesach. Right? Uh, and it doesn't mean that, that you're forced not to eat Kabrux either. Right? Uh, that's for the Lubavitches out there who don't mix matzah with water or even heck they even eat matzah in um little cellophane bags so um yeah only because ashkenazim happened to have a custom of not eating kidney oats and the reason this this was the case is because i think they would keep the the hummets alongside like kidney oat products or something in europe and whatever it's a whole it's a thing that has to be done away with yeah, no, but you could go ahead and change your, your minuk. It's not, uh, I mean, some people want it to be more formal, you know, so you have to do, uh, you have to be, some people say you have to be like mater nether, that you go before three Jews. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying this is what Haredim will tell you. Go before three Jews and in some way free yourself from a custom that you picked up from your, one of your parents, but you don't even have to do that because it's not, it, if the custom violates an actual halakha, it, it specifically states that they eat kit in the Mishnah. I mean, it's not a, it's, it's not a suffix. It's not like a question. All right. So yeah, I mean, you just, yeah, so you're fine. If Ashkenazim didn't go against their, their, their minhagim, there wouldn't be Chabad. You have to understand there wouldn't be Breslov because these are all later, well, the Hasidus in general is a later movement, but these are sub movements of the big of, of Hasidut in general. So they've been doing it a, a lot, right? I think Sfarnim in Israel now like are becoming a Breslov a lot too. So people leave their 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 backgrounds all the time. They're Minhag and their Kirshiot, Minhagot. Okay, let's see. Explain the difference between Judaism and Christianity. Huh. Okay, so Judaism is like Christianity plus laws minus Jesus, right? And yeah, that's pretty much it. And minus the New Testament. Now that's very brief. Okay, let's see. It says, I believe in Yeshua, the son of the Most High. Okay. Uh, I thought Judaism was non-proselytizing. Judaism as it's practiced today is non-proselytizing, but it, there's nothing in Judaism that prohibits Jews from proselytizing. If you call this proselytizing, right, just letting people know the obvious, right? I mean, I'll tell you right now, Judaism is not for everyone. I had a um, somebody, a co-worker, I have a good friend of mine, who, another co-worker says, why don't you invite him over to the Seder? You know, because this year I, I ate in the local Chabad. You know, my kids are, are out of state with their mom or whatever. So uh, I basically said, because I don't want them to get... The reason I don't invite my non-Jewish friend is because I don't want him to get mistreated in the shul. All right, it's better for him to go to church. So ideally, I wish everyone would come to Judaism, but as it exists today, Judaism is not equipped to handle newcomers. Although, if you're serious, and that's really what the message is, if you're serious about Torah, then go for it and convert. Right? There's no discouraging done here. Okay, uh, but it's like. I've never invited my parents to, to anything Jewish I just because they're not religious enough. You know, I mean, I converted to Judaism. I wasn't born Jewish. So, uh, yeah, if people still want to call that prophetizing, then whatever. But it's for sure, it's as it exists today. And the goal with me proselytizing is to make it more mainstream that one day Judaism would be more accepting to newcomers that it'll be easier for me to just, I don't know, throw people in a mikvah, but 
as it exists today, it's only for the few and the proud. That's it. And those with thick skin. Let me see. Someone says, I believe in God, chooses, or yes, but I also believe that except his son. Okay. You know, okay, yes. Okay, someone says we're not supposed to proselytize. That's actually not true. Guys, whoever says we're not supposed to proselytize in Judaism, I'm sorry. You may be very knowledgeable about other areas in Judaism, but you're lacking in this area. There's nothing in Judaism that prohibits people proselytizing. Okay, there's nothing. Now, if if you're going to say it's custom, okay, it's a modern, it's it, it's a new custom. But it's not in it's not in the Torah like this, it's not in Tanakh like this, it's not by Chazal uh, like this. I mean, it's not in the Talmud, it's not. It's, it's in my opinion, what's called like a minuxtus, so like a silly custom that, that kind of crept in because we started, um, I don't know, being absorbed by the exile. Jews weren't allowed to proselytize in the countries they were kicked out to, so they felt that, oh, well, we've probably been like this forever. You know, it's not true. Even the New Testament talks about Jews proselytizing. Tacitus, uh, Salobaran, Paul Johnson, it's uh, it's a thing. Should someone who finds out they're ethnically Jewish start keeping Torah? I don't teach that, by the way. I mean, that's something that Chabad teaches, that if if you're Jewish, you know, you're, you're uh, I don't know, you're more bound to keep Torah than not. If you're consciously Jewish, that means, yes, I mean, even a Gentile who has come to the realization that Torah is true, start keeping it, okay? Start a conversion program right away. But only, I mean... This is what most people teach, and I'm going to show you how bigoted it sounds. Okay, well, you just found out that you're ethnically Jewish. Oh, my God. You've been breaking commandments all along, and uh, you didn't even know, right? That means you're being judged. You're in some way special to God. God holds you to a higher, higher standard because of the pedigree that you happen to stem from. Yes, start keeping Torah right away. Do you know how bigoted that sounds? That all along you were special and you didn't even know it, right? It's like Anastasia. Uh, no, bullcrap. Um, if you're serious about God and Torah observance and ethics, uh, then yeah, start keeping Torah. But that has nothing to do with you having a Jewish mother or not. Now, the truth is, nowadays, you're not going to be made to convert if, if you wanted to return to Judaism. So yeah, I mean, I would encourage you to consider becoming Jewish. I, or in this case, return to Judaism. Uh, but the simple fact that you're on this show means that you care, I think. So uh, yeah, go for it. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it was a rhetorical question. Right. I mean, like you're on this show. Um, I don't know. I can make it sound more spiritual. You're not here by mistake. So, yes, start being Jewish. Someone says, am, am I a PB? I'm not even going to say the word here because uh, whatever. I, I, I used to be. I, I used to be and then whatever politics. Okay, how do Jews pr pray? Well, nowadays, huh, the vast majority of Jews, they really recite, right? The real portion of prayer that's not really practiced nowadays is it's what was known as Nefilat Payim, which is a portion of the Amidah, well, not, uh, in and around, that they would fall to their face and, and offer personal supplications to God, or Tachanun. But the vast majority of prayers nowadays are more like reciting. They recite something, you know, kind of keep you, I mean, prayer at least in Judaism, it's not about God being a celestial butler and, I don't know, it's like you asking your dad for money. No, it's more for you, right, to keep you in track, um, keep your priorities uh, straight. That's the reason of prayer. It's not that God needs you to pray, right? I mean, it's to square yourself away. Yeah, that's it. Uh, what about the Noahide movement for non-Jews? I think the Noahide movement belongs in the Bronze Age, or even before... <laughs> I, it's a thing, right? According to halakha, every Gentile, by definition, is a ben or bat noach. That means they're either a, according to Jewish law, they are a daughter or a son of Noah. There's nothing really for you guys to accept. Although later on, they created a procedure on how to make a formal resident alien, a formal ger toshav, that you have to stand before three Jews and, I don't know, commit yourself to, to that sort of existence. This only applies in the land of Israel when there's the jubilee year being kept. The idea that someone's considered righteous by keeping seven or eight laws, I think it's ridiculous. Okay, it's a thing, right? It 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 appears like this. Uh, for sure, it appears like this in the Rambam. I have to look it up to see by by, by Chazal it says, but it says that if someone keeps the Sheva the Sheva Mitzvot Bnei Noach, they are considered the 
the Hasidic Umat Olam, the righteous of the nations, and they get a chelik in Olam Haba. They get a, a portion in the world to come. Uh, um, that's one opinion. I think it's it's silly. I I I think it's silly, and it's built off of medrash. That means it's built off of folklore and legend. In the Torah, there's only one standard, and that's Torah observance. One standard to please God. The notion of a ger toshav doesn't appear in the Torah. That means Gentiles are allowed to live in the land of Israel as long as they are made ethically docile somehow. So the rabbis developed these these seven Noahid laws, right? Tradition, like everything, gives gives everything a mystical twist. So the idea is that as tradition teaches all these legends that six laws were given to Adam and the seventh law given to Noah, I don't believe in that stuff. I, you know. Shavuotag. Shavuotag haksamech. Okay, you really put this on the night right? Remember the resurrection. You really... I, yeah, I mean, it's not a coincidence. I mean, I uh, do this every other night, but we've been out for, you know, since, since Wednesday, I think. Yeah, but what's tomorrow? Easter? Whatever, I'm not here to bash Jesus at all, by the way. Really, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm I'm here to make Christians better Christians and Jews better Jews and Muslims better Muslims, right? But I'm just here to, to, to tell you to uh, look into Judaism. How can I make someone a better Christian and how can I make someone a better Jew? I'll tell you, the same way someone like Dennis Prager does, right? Um, I think that, these, that all these monotheistic religions are the children or that Judaism is the parent of, of, of those two at least. So um, if I'm able to like tug at the ethical strings of, like of your heart and realize like, you know what, perhaps it's time to get your act together, right? Return to the one God and his ethical standard, whether you're a Christian, Muslim or Jewish, I think that, that um, yeah, the initiative is still the same. Messianic Jews. So I'm not a Messianic Jew. Um, they're Jews who believe in Jesus. As long as you keep Torah, that's really what's important. I don't, I don't really care who you think the Messiah is. All of India should become Jewish or Christian. I think they should all become Jewish, obviously. Uh, Christians are, uh, I guess, a minority in India. Uh, yeah. Do you believe in hell? I personally believe in hell. Um, I don't think that God commands you to believe in it, or then he would have mentioned something in the Bible about it. Believe that everything in in Christianity and Islam and modern day Judaism is built off of the notion of hell. It doesn't appear in our Bible. Uh, I mean, it, yes, it appears in the Christian Bible and yes, it appears in the Quran, but it doesn't appear in the Jewish Bible, right? The core does not talk about hell. Go figure, huh? Hmm. So much. Uh, it's it's so silly. It's like everyone, the vast majority of people who make Teshuvah or, or are saved nowadays from Christian perspective or revert to Islam, they do it because they don't want to go to hell. But, the, but the, you know, source material doesn't even talk about hell, really. Oh, guys, like and follow. Like, like, like. The more you like, the more people we get in the room. So, uh, like the chat, you know, like, da, 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 and follow. Man. I ordered one of these um, these these consoles from eBay. You've seen it's got like 15,000 games, like retro games. Because I have, I got, I got Xbox One and, and Xbox, yeah, and the X, you know, the PS4, all the virtual realities, everything, and whatever. And, and I wanted this one. And right before this, I tried it and it came out defective. Boy, I was ready to play Mortal Kombat. So now I have to ship it back to China. Go figure. I don't know where. Oh, yeah. That came to mind because I said, like, click, 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 like, like, like. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, click it like it's a Nintendo controller. Let's see. You're not chosen. We're all equal. You're discriminating. <laughs> all other religions. I guess my friend Man with a Dream just hopped on here. I'm not... I I hate the term chosen people. Okay. I, the word in Hebrew is Bahar. It's not really like to choose blindly, by the way. It's like kind of you're appointed for a purpose. And it's... Where does this notion of the chosen people even come from? I'll tell you. It comes from Abraham. And anyone familiar with the story of, of Abraham knows that he wasn't really chosen. Okay. Uh, it was Abraham choosing God. Because God is he's not going to choose someone blindly and then give them 10 tests. And it's interesting. I'm not a big fan of the Zohar. The Zohar specifically says Abraham chose God. Um, 
and that's a notion. There's a legend that says that the Torah was given, was offered to all the nations of the world, and it was only Abraham or the Jewish people who accepted it. And that comes from the idea that God speaks to everyone. Okay, I think I think that everyone's born with an ethical um, a a bare ethical minimum in their conscience uh, to be able to at least get them to the doorstep of a more sophisticated philosophy that will drag them the rest of the way ethically. So I think that's God offering himself to everyone. But it was Abraham, according to our religion, Abraham, the first one who picked up from where he was and went to where God wanted him to be. You know, that this has nothing to do with being chosen. The Jewish people are not a chosen people. Okay. We chose God. And it doesn't matter how the text may may word it. We have to use common sense when reading the text. If the idea of chosenness has to do with God choosing Abraham, then according to the text, God didn't choose Abraham. Okay, It was ultimately Abraham who chose God. God spoke to everyone and still speaks to people today. And there's only a handful of people who, who choose ethics because of hearing and not because of doing. Meaning some people choose to learn by hearing and not learn things the hard way. This is why when I see older ethical people, it's not so impressive. Okay, okay. You've learned the hard way that uh, that you shouldn't live life like some sort of hedonist and then in some way um, expect to have an ethical bet to lay on when you get older. Uh, so you learn things the hard way. That's the most primitive way to learn. The best way to learn is to learn by hearing, to learn by watching, right? Don't do what that guy did because you don't want to end up like that guy. This is why when I see young people who are religious, I get excited. I'm like, oh. Finally, there's some hope for this planet. But when you go to synagogue or church or mosque, whatever, and it's full of old people, I mean, come on. You know, it's like, of course, because you think you're going to die and this and that. And I'm glad, you know, I mean, at least you've decided to square yourself away now. But uh, if you figure that out when you're younger, boy, um, the impact. All right, let's see. You need to teach this one. I don't know what that means. Google Matita Pepe. Most people don't do Matita Pepe by nowadays. I mean, the most models use the syringe. But even back then, it wasn't it wasn't uh, sexual. I've learned and heard from the Talmud, and I'm terrified of how you guys think that you're going to. I don't know what that means. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, yeah. If, if I didn't say it before, like and follow. Guys, where are my guests at? Come on, share this video with all your haters. Those who think they know it all in these religious shows, TikTok shows. I think this may be the only religious TikTok show, right? I don't, I don't think. I mean, there's a few. I think there's one or two that there's there's a rabbi, in some way maybe answering questions, maybe, but not uh, actually trying to debate or say that what is right for him is right for others. Yeah, well, anyways, I'll claim the uh, award. This is it. So what other opportunity are you going to have to really let this the, your anger out of the Jewish people with this show? Have over 2,000 2, Gentile slaves, okay? I mean, if they're unethical people, give me 10,000. What are your thoughts on... Hasidism. I'm. I'm not a fan. I actually pray at a, a Hasidic synagogue just because. Uh, whatever. It's like my son's in LEC. It's in like in the, in the local Lubavitch school, so he goes there to play with his friends. But no, they're nice in terms of ideology, and I'm pretty sure that's that's what you're asking. We're dealing with religious people here, you know. Like if I see, a, I don't know, a Baptist making or, or I'm saying that they dislike a Methodist when they're both. Um, Oh, hold on. Hold on. There's somebody texting me. Yeah, uh, guys, if you know someone who's of a different denomination, right? And I mean, you both believe in the Bible, right? In this case, from a Jewish perspective, you both believe in Jewish law, but you philosophically, you're a little different. That's not enough to. to hate someone over okay i mean maybe you won't have the person over for shabbos because all he wants to do is talk about the rabbit but that's that's uh, 
in the old days, people had a reason to hate each other, right? I mean, this guy just killed my dog, you know, I don't know, raped my cow, right? But over something so silly, like things that aren't even covered in the Torah, that's not enough. It's not enough. Still goy. I don't know what that means. What are the most important mitzvot to keep? Well, the ethical ones. The ethical ones. Um, they are positive commandments and negative commandments. I wish the Torah explained it as such. It doesn't. It makes some distinction, actually. But, uh, so, there's, okay. Let's divide them further. And like and follow, like and follow, and we'll get more people. So, we have negative commandments, positive commandments. Negative commandments are commandments that tell you to don't do something, right? Positive commandments tell you to do something. And then there's ceremonial laws versus ethical laws. Ceremonial laws are like, um, I don't know, don't eat pork. Don't eat, don't, um, shotness, don't mix wool and linen. Ethical commandments are like, burn the evil from amongst your midst. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't mistreat the orphan, the widow, the stranger. So, yes, I think positive commandments and uh, ethical commandments are more important than negative and ceremonial ones. That doesn't mean that the other ones aren't, aren't applicable. They are. But you asked me what's important or what's more important. Yeah. One second. But hop on, guys. Hop on. Don't mind me here. I'm just kind of snooping through the, uh, the list here. What will happen to Gentiles who don't know or didn't keep Torah in the world to come? Heck, I don't know. Was Jesus a good rabbi? I, uh, I don't, uh, I mean, yeah, I think so. I, I, I don't think Jesus thought that he was going to become like, you know, Michael Jackson or Prince or whatever they made him to be. But, uh, yeah, I thought he was, he was attacking a lot of the stuff I'm attacking nowadays. A lot of the hypocrisy in the Jewish world. I wonder, are they going to make me the Messiah when I die also? You never know. You never know. Okay. Okay. You're telling me after you repent, you never do it again. Okay. Here you go. This notion, there's a misconception out there that in order to please God, you have to be absolutely perfect. And I don't think people actually believe that, right? It's kind of hard to, to really embody that teaching and at the same time feel that you're worshiping an ethical God. It's it's just the idea that you feel that God expects you to be, he expects the impossible, right? And um, yeah, or in some way will rewrite the source material to in some way pull you out clean at the other end, uh, i.e. in some way introducing the idea that someone's going to die for your sins because you can't live a perfect life and then you'll still make it to heaven. Mm, that's not in the source material. It's kind of unworthy of a good God. You know, God made you with 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 flaws and all, and I don't really think this this in some way contradicts the Christian message and the gospel either. God made you how you are, right? Um, and you're a mixed bag ethically, and the the most that He could expect from people on this planet is that you do more good than bad. But the idea that because you're not perfect, you're destined to hell if you don't accept some sort of human sacrifice done in your behalf. I, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. You know, God has to make himself likable to us. I mean, we're human, right? I mean, heck, what's going to stop us from following a God that seems more likable. Right? Kobe Bryant is God, right? Kobe Bryant is God. No. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm saying in terms of likability, everybody like Kobe Bryant. Talking about Kobe Bryant, the Jew, we have the Jewish Kobe Bryant. Hello, Rabbi. Haksameh. Haksameh. Yeah. Oh. You know, that what, what you were talking about, I, I never understand this question that Christians make, and it makes no sense to me. Whenever I hear this, like, well, could you keep all the commandments? And I know that it says in their Bible that no one can keep all the commandments, but it makes no sense that God would create commandments knowing that no one could keep them. Like, what kind of God do they believe in? The God that's so unjust that he would give you a task knowing that you could never fulfill that task? Like that That's not the kind of God that I would follow. I don't understand that concept. It's Yeah, 
it's not a reasonable notion. It doesn't really make sense if you don't have hell accompanied with it. You know, because they're like, don't think too much about it because you might die tomorrow. And you're like, okay, I'm sold. We're going to sign up. So, yeah, without hell, I don't think anyone would really become Christian or Muslim. Um, I mean, just because it's not an ethics-based religion. There are ethical movements, don't get me wrong. Um, I know you understand what I'm saying, but for the Christians listening. Yeah. Uh, uh, but they're ethical because they've appropriated the ethics here in the Torah. So, uh, yeah, it's heaven and hell. And uh, nobody wants to go to hell for some reason. I mean, I always thought that's where, like, the rock music is and, you know, the 80s women. <laughs> well, right? this guy, oh, looked, he's saying this is the reason why Christ had to come, so because no one could keep him. So this this is a concept that basically I hire you to do the job. I give you the job description. I know there's no way that you could ever fulfill this job description. So then I'm going to, for next 10 years, I'm going to beat you every day at the end of the day because you can't do what I hired you to do. And then after 10 years, I'm going to say, huh, uh, here's the trick. I never gave you the manual, but here's the manual now. After 10 years of beating you, it was a trick. You could never do it. That's the God they believe in. I can't, like, I, I, I don't comprehend this approach. Why would just God give you laws that he knew you couldn't keep and not give you the Jesus that same day? Like that, that makes no sense. Yeah. So for those who think that we're just in some way, you know, just fronting Christians, so we're trying to present Judaism as it appears in the Torah alone. All right. Because there's, there's Jews who believe some silly, silly doctrines that are in some way as silly. Like, uh, there's this notion that all Jews are going to make it to heaven, no matter what you do. No matter what you do on this planet, you go to purgatory, and every Jew is special. And, you know, and also the idea that the Messiah, I mean, everything is counting down to the Messiah come. You know, it, if everything revolves around a Messiah, whether it's Judaism or Christianity, because in this area, they teach the same thing. If everything revolves around the Messiah... You're nullifying Mount Sinai. There's no point of God giving you commandments to improve this world if the Messiah is is on his way, um, both in Christianity or in Judaism, because it makes no sense. When I hear a Jew say it, it makes no sense also. Mashiach now. All right, I'm like, Mashiach later. Uh, okay, so Mashiach now and what? Okay, so God gave you commandments. From my perspective, to, it, I don't know, fight evil, improve the world, whatever. And now the Messiah is just going to come and bail the Jews out. And I'll tell you, the Jews are responsible for a lot of the crap that's going on nowadays. I don't say I said it, but, you know, whatever, right? Then, then what's the point of the commandments? It's just as meaningless as saying that God gave us commandments, but now Jesus is going to come back and establish his kingdom. And uh, from a Christian perspective, those who accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior will be saved. From a Jewish perspective, those who happen to be born of a Jewish mother will be saved. They're both equally worthless interpretations of the Bible, both of them, okay? Because they don't, well, they nullify Mount Sinai completely. The Jewish version nullifies Mount Sinai. The Christian version nullifies Mount Sinai. Because either one are not focused on ethics. Now, yes, Jews still keep the mitzvot, but they feel that the average Jew, I'm not saying average Jew, but the average Jew feels that what saves them is having a Jewish mother, right? All of Israel... They have a chelik and lamaba. Kol Yisrael, Yishim chelik lamaba. Yeah, this is what Chabad teaches every day. It's, I mean, it's not just Chabad. I mean, Chazal teaches too. But I mean, anything Chazal have to say on on non legal terms are not like it's not binding. That means you could take it or leave it. So this is like an equal opportunity show in terms of like bashing each side. If Jews do something that's primitive and backwards, then we're going to call them out on it. If not, by definition, we wouldn't improve. If Christians do something that, that's ultimately primitive and backwards with our material, right? I mean, this is the only reason we're speaking about it, because you're doing it. I mean, you're saying the God of Israel. I mean, we're not trying to speak in behalf of, of Christianity. We're speaking in behalf of the portions of, of, like, of Judaism that made Christianity, right? So we're going to call that out also. And Muslims, and, and Muslims kind of get the same thing, because they've combined the two of Judaism and Christianity. But it's it's all like a rewriting of the Bible. No one follows the Bible anymore. You know, from Jewish, Christian to Muslim, nobody cares. I mean, they follow rabbis 
and they follow, I mean, they want to be liked and they use the word heresy and kosher too much, which are, or whatever, haram and, and, and halal, like accepted and not accepted. Who gives a crap? I mean, you're either keeping what the Torah says or not. The vast majority of times when the word heresy is used, it means that you've pissed off like some modern rabbi, you know, it has nothing to do with halakha, has nothing to do with, with, uh, with, with, uh, Torah Tav. It's like Kashkafa. Anyways, let's see. Let's keep it going. I think I actually uh, wanted to talk to you about something uh, like this concept. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud, but, you know, trying to bring more people to Judaism it, and it's a great thing to do. And I 100 percent agree with you and believe in it. The problem is that whoever we talk to and convince them that that's the right approach, as soon as they walk to community, they're going to get pushed out. Right. They, they don't get accepted. So it's like, isn't it even making it worse? Because now you, you're creating people who tried, got re rejected, and now they hate it. Okay, so I don't think they're going to get pushed out. They're, they're Are they going to become like them? And I, I don't know. I mean, show up in our comments here, like just typing, like Jews don't proselytize over and over again. Uh, so, yes, it seems that we're just creating enemies that we're going to have to fight later on. So, um, but that's the only way to win this fight, all right? Um, we're going to have to sacrifice a few people, okay? Uh, but yes, uh, but there's a lot of people that I've converted, that I brought to Judaism, that, that are, are doing the same thing I'm doing. Uh, but yes, the vast majority of people who do convert, and I encourage, I mean, I've encouraged people to convert for, for, for I don't know, over t almost 20 years, just became cookie cutter Orthodox Jews who who don't give a crap about anyone but themselves, unfortunately. Uh, but we have to do something. We have to do something. And I think that I've I've made a little dent in the armor of Judaism with bringing awareness to the conversion issue, the conversion crisis, um, and the halachic issue of of how to understand halacha from a more, I don't know, Talmudic perspective instead of what's done nowadays that everything is considered a halakha and no one makes a distinction. So, yes, I mean, it seems quite hopeless, but you can't stop. You can't stop because if, if you do, then for sure they're going to win. And by they, it means like the dumb Jews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what the other thing too is like, where, where do they go, right? Like, do... Do you send them to Chabad? Well, Chabad doesn't really convert anybody. They just, and then it's like Hasidic. So Hasidic Judaism, like I, I don't practice Hasidic Judaism, you know, I, I, and I think that it's kind of like really far away from Judaism, you know, like where do you send them? You send them to conservative because it, it would be easier, but conservative is also not real Judaism, right? They're, they're too far to the left. So it's kind of like, where, where do you even tell people to go? You're never going to find one synagogue that agrees with you 100%. So I don't think like Hasidut is a lost cause. I think that I've, I've had many Chabad rabbis contact me on the side saying, yes, they believe in what I believe in proselytizing, but they believe in the Tanya, they believe in the Rebbe. Fine. Okay, whatever. You know, um, yeah, if I agree with someone 70% of the time, I consider them Tavarish. I consider them a comrade. I don't, it's, yeah, in life, it's about evolution. It's not about revolution. It's about little steps. Um, this, like some sort of utopian attempt to perfect Judaism or religion is not going to happen. And if if it does, it's a cult and it's not going to last. So I feel we're doing good. You know, is it like a two steps forward, one step back? That's it. That's, that's, this is how reasonable people move forward. Here, welcome, big... Right. A teacher, bro. I'm gonna send yeah, him to you, and you'll figure it out. Okay, all right. Hi, how you doing? First of all, hi, hi, how's it going? Um, I just have a few questions, like mainly just like uh, out of pure curiosity, because I mean, of course, like questions are not not debate, but just like conversation. If one would, are you okay with that? Yeah, sure. Man. Okay, cool. So for Judaism, um, is which is your belief? Uh, is so do you believe in the, then, I guess, so I, I just want to put, that, put this out um, for, I guess, I'm a Christian, 
Um, so I know Christian Judaism are, are separate. Um, you know, do the Old Testament and the New Testament beliefs. Um, so part of what the Old Testament. Now, what part of Asia are you from? What? What part of Asia are you from? I'm from China. Oh. Okay. From Shanxi. Nice. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering. Um, so do you believe up to the book of, I think, Haggai, or do you believe uh, just the, the Torah? Like, what's your, what's your what's your belief process on that? So when you say believe, you mean, like, divinely inspired text? Yeah, like where do you where do you stop? Yeah, so Jews don't have this understanding of divinely inspired text. We have commandments that we believe that God gave us, gave all of humanity. Essentially, He wants to keep it, and then mm -hmm. there's books written around that to to bring you back to those commandments. I know that the average Christian, when he reads the Book of Isaiah, he reads it as reverently as he reads the Book of Exodus, um, because he believes that all of that is like it came from God, right? I mean, I've seen Christians try to pull demons out of people by quoting the book of Psalms, right? But no one even knows who completely wrote the book of Psalms. And it's, it. however, Jews have a better understanding of who wrote it, right? Rabbis wrote it. So when someone says that they believe in this book, I mean, I believe in the whole portion that Christians call the Old Testament um, as books that were sanctioned uh, by the rabbis of being worthy of studying. But within those books, there's a section called the Torah that claims I know, to have... Yeah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Yeah. Yeah. So within those books that we colloquially call the Torah nowadays, there are commandments around 613 uh, yeah. commandments that came from God. So that is the only real word of God. The commandments that came down through Moses is the word of God. Everything else is just essentially commentary. Okay, interesting. So then, the, from the 613, then, um, what about the 10 commandments from then, like, from Moses, then? Like, what does that have to do with, I mean, I know, of course, when you read um, Deuteronomy and, wait, and Leviticus, you see all these Levitical laws, and you see all these things you must do to make yourself clean, because, I mean, I don't want to talk out of, out of ignorance here, I'm not, you know, yeah. I don't want to be, um, are, do those 10 not outweigh the other, or, like, like, what's just, like, um, your thought process on that? Um, and if you think that, um, if you think that I'm asking, like, a, a weird question, I can rephrase it if you need to. No, them. no, Here, don't, don't worry. But the vast majority of people who listen to this show are, like, kind of very advanced. You know, so they, they, they know exactly what you're talking about. And this show is made up of Christians, Muslims, Jews. Yeah, so, I mean, well, you're in good company. Cool. No ten commandments, i.e. 10 statements, are part of the 613. Right. I mean, they're lumped in. Yeah. Uh, there's actually probably a little more than 613 laws, but but we just say 613. But yeah, there's but they're yeah. included. OK, so then um, to, I guess to you then. So um, I know that the Judeans believe that, um, of course, Jesus, Jesus was just another prophet. Or do you guys do you think he's a prophet? I'm confused on what you guys, I forget what that was or just another great guy. No. So, because I know you guys don't believe he's the son of God. And I understand that. But like, what's your belief on that? I'm just wondering. Again. My personal belief, I think he was a good guy. I um, mm -hmm. believe he was a teacher. I don't, in terms of a prophet, I don't think he was a prophet. I mean, who knows? Right? I mean, I can't speak for all of Judaism. I mean, it's just, it's. Uh, no, yeah, just, just you personally. Yeah. Um, I think that the existence of Jesus on this planet was an ethical net gain. I think because of Christianity, um, the world is a peaceful, a more peaceful place than without it. Now, I wish Jews would have spread the Bible as as well as the Christians have, uh, or or how Islam has spread ethical monotheism, but they didn't. I mean, Jews didn't do it, unfortunately. So, yeah, I mean, I think Christianity is good, and I believe Islam is good. I just think that Judaism is better. No, yeah, that that that's fine. I mean, we all have our own personal beliefs and our personal um, thought processes. This on though, um, so when you say you become Jewish, then then how come um in the Old Testament? I'm just wondering, where does it say? And this is just again, I'm not trying to like trying to trap you in worrying. I'm just genuinely curious. Um, where does it say to convert Gentiles to Judaism? So there's no command to go out and convert people to Judaism. 
but it does appear that people joined the Jewish people. Like on Mount yeah. Sinai, it says that there was a mixed multitude that alongside the Hebrews also accepted the Torah and entered the covenant with God. And then a chapter later, it says there shall be one law, one standard for the native born and he who, who dwells with you. Um, it says at the end of the book of Esther that they became Jewish, that the Persians became Jewish that, or a big part of them. Um, it's, it's a thing. It's a, I mean, even Jesus's great, great, great grandmother, uh, joined the Jewish people that she was from Moab. Ruth. Yeah. Um, some believe Jethro also, some believe Obadiah, the prophet. Um, yeah, no, it's a thing. It's a thing. Okay, cool then. Um, well then, I don't know. I just, I just, I, I, I love learning. I'll say that. And I love learning about different other people's opinions. And I think it's absolutely amazing to see the type of, um, well, you can become Jewish, by the way. You, and forget about oh. Jesus. I continue believing in Jesus. It, it doesn't bother me. Um, but I'd like to ask you, perhaps you ever considered becoming Torah observant? Oh, like exegetical teaching or what do you? No, Torah observant. Um, have you ever? I know you believe that you're saved by grace through Jesus' sacrifice on a cross. But in terms of pleasing a good God. Uh, I think that many Christians have come to the conclusion that by keeping the law, um, that God judge you by that in, in terms of, I don't know, there's different levels of salvation in, in Christianity, right? In my house, there are many mansions, right? There's different levels, right? There are some that are called the least in the kingdom of heaven and some that are called the greatest. So it seems that those who strive to do more of the word of God are closer to God, even in Christianity. So have you ever considered keeping God's law to the best, like best of your ability? Yeah. I mean, of course I try to do everything I can to glorify God, no matter um, what I do, say and do. But ultimately, I mean, I know, I, I mean, I know I'm human. I know I'll mess up and I know I'd have to repent for my sins. And I understand that. Um, but yes, ultimately everything I want, I want to do is to glorify God. All right. So that's becoming Jewish, you know, so perhaps you should convert to Judaism. I mean, Jesus, well, I guy, right? I mean, don't you want to, I mean, to be Christian means to be Christ-like. What would Jesus do? Well, Jesus would keep Torah. He wouldn't eat pork. He wouldn't work on the Sabbath. Um, I think you should strive to be more Jesus-like. I'm not entirely, I think that's where we differ. And that's okay. I have our personal opinions on that. Um, I, I know. I'm, I mean, if you, if you disagree that, I mean, we just disagree and that's okay though. Cause we can respect each other's disagreements. Okay. Um, I mean, I had to put it out there just because this is. No, yeah, no, of course. I get it. You're trying to spread your uh, your beliefs. Don't get me wrong, right? Well, my beliefs. Um, I mean, because we believe in the same Bible, at least. Oh, the same, the same half, yeah. Um, but this we different. We vary on the New Testament because I mean, I believe that Jesus uh, is a person who. So then, do you believe then that um, that we're still waiting for a Messiah then, and that still is to come from the prophets, just from the prophets alone, like Jews in general are. Yes. Opinion. I think that the idea is some sort of an optional one. It's just because the Jewish Bible is not so explicit on the, I'm for sure the Torah isn't, on the need for a Messiah. It seems that everything revolves around a good God and his ethical standard for humanity, not around some king and some sort of millennial reign. I don't know where that even came from. I mean, it was kind of put together by little statements here and there in the prophets and in the book of Daniel. But being that the prophets aren't allowed to add anything new, I don't know how it really took off. But yes, most Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come. I feel like that any king we have in Judaism, he's going to be anointed with oil. And that's, at least according to our biggest rabbi, which is Maimonides, that's who the Messiah is. So, uh, yeah, from that perspective, I'm waiting for the Messiah to come. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Just, yeah, I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Um, thank you. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah, you have a wonderful day. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey. yeah, like real, real quick. <laughs> yeah. He was asking where specifically he talks about conversion. It's Exodus twelve forty eight. It's a clear law of how somebody converts to Israel. All right. Twelve thirty eight. Forty eight. Oh, forty eight. Yeah. All right, guys, like the show and follow the hosts. Like and follow, like and follow. Shalom, bro. Shalom. 
Hello. Uh, Andre Hashmiramambro. There we go. Hashirama. Hashirama. Oh, so where's your background? Say what? Where's your background from? South America. Oh, where? So where in South America? Um, Brazil. Oi. Yeah. I don't. I lived. Uh, like... I I don't speak Portuguese. Oh, okay. So if you're gonna speak Portuguese, it it will be pointless. What your accent sounds like? Uh... My father. My. What? My father is Portuguese. I am English. Oh, like British, you mean? No, my father's my father's Portuguese. I am English. No, I know. I speak yeah, English. Accent. Yeah. All right. Never so mind. yeah, let, let's forget. Let's let's forget about me. Yeah, it don't matter. Um. Yeah. So, by the way, um, you, I follow you already. That that means you and I we conversed before. Because I follow you. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. so you're a Jewish person, Muslim, Christian? No, I'm Christian. I'm Christian. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Have you ever considered becoming so, Jewish? What is Jewish? Torah covenant, for lack of a better term. Torah covenant. Torah is, covenant. Yes. Keeping the law of Moses. Uh, Yes. Uh, well, committing yourself to keep the law of Moses, not just like here and there, just making a commitment to keep it to the best of your ability. Which is wearing fringes and keeping the law of not not putting an ox and an ass together and all of these things. Exodus, uh, the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy and Leviticus, more specifically, correct? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean that and. And submitting yourself to the rulings of the judges, as it says in Deuteronomy chapter 17. It says, don't stray to the right or to the left of what the court, the Sanhedrin, uh, they have many different names, the judges instructed. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, um, so explain, explain more. Give me more details into what you mean. Sure. Okay, so you asked what Judaism is. I said Torah covenants, and I asked you if you ever considered becoming Jewish. Becoming Jewish means entering the covenant, just like the people on Mount Sinai, you know, they said we will do and we will listen. They wanted to follow God, and they wanted to be his representatives here on earth, right? It's good for religious people to align themselves with other religious people, i.e. this is the people of Israel. And... Um, I think this is important because making the world a better place is a team effort. That's it. You know, that's what becoming Israel really is. Okay, but but is not Israel a people instead of a just being a, like a, a thing? Like you could become? So Israel are a people essentially made up of belief and action. Because there's a statement, and you can look this up. It appears over 100 times in the Torah. It says that if you do such and such, you shall be cut off from your people. In Hebrew, it's called lekaret, that you are cut off. So only because you happen to have a Jewish mother doesn't mean that you're religiously part of the people of Israel if you don't keep God's covenant. I mean, even the land of Israel doesn't belong to Jews. The land of Israel belongs to whoever keeps the Torah. So, you know... That's what the Bible says. Yeah. yeah, but does not the Bible say that your lineage comes from your father instead of your mother? Tribal lineage, yes. Yeah, and does not the, the scripture says that how Israel is described through lineage of Jacob? Jacob? Uh, part of Israel is, not all of it. Right? Like I mentioned before that on Mount Sinai, there stood a mixed multitude of peoples who had no lineage going back to Jacob or Abraham. And a few chapters later, they were absorbed into the Jewish people. So, yes. Yeah, no, no. A next, a next thing is not the Jewish, the Jewish custom is from a specific tribe in the book of Kings specifies that Israel and Judah were separated, meaning 
three tribes were separated into Judah and then another the other tribes were separated into Israel. Kingdoms. Yeah. The kingdom of Judah kingdom. was like more than just Judah. So there's people who didn't have a portion of land that were still called Israel. I mean there's no portion of land called Levi uh or 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 Levi and they're still part of Israel. So only because you don't have a portion of land doesn't mean that you're not Israel. Yeah, but the, the land on, on a real the land does not as a, as as important as the people because without the people they cannot have a land. Um therefore it's not the according to scripture that the scripture says that the tribe of Levi are the children of of um like keeping sacrificial laws and all of these things, like the tribe of Levi. It's just a specific tribe. Yeah. Nobody else. No, correct, correct. Well, there's certain, in terms of offices, legal office, in order to be a priest, you have to be from the sons of Aaron who come from Levi and to be a temple worker, you have to be a Levite as well. Yes. So, I mean, someone who's not born from that tribe can can have that job right so therefore, it, it, therefore it's a system therefore right it's a system of priests kings and servants in a way when no. you look at it biblically well nowhere in the Torah does it limit where kings could come from um it's only regarding the priests and not all priests because you could be a priest, but if you're don't believe you're not eligible for that position. Uh, so, I mean, it's not blood based, but we don't believe that all priests are, are important to God. Only people who are, who have committed themselves to observance. There's a lot of people with the last name Cohen who are atheists, right? They're not religiously part of Israel. They could be legally part of Israel. But I don't understand what that where you're getting at. Yeah, go ahead. Oh well, well, according to scripture, does not it say that um, the the tribe of well, not tribe of, but the lineage of kings will be from the tribe of Judah, according to King David, lineage comes down. The Torah doesn't say that specifically. Not the I mean, Torah specifically, no. The 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 um the Old Testament more specifically. Well, the I mean, well, the Torah it is in the Old Testament, but no, no, because there were kings who, who were not from the tribe of David, like King Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. I know the promise that was made through David was that his son would build his house, um, and then God would establish his stone. You know, for a long time, if he would remain on that path. But nowhere in the Torah does it say that kings only come from the line of Judah. No, the Torah or, was or not the, specifically. Nowhere in the Old Testament. Yeah. So nowhere in the Old no, Testament. But, but does it say that kings only uh, can come from the line of Judah? No, but it does not say that any king could come from any tribe as well. Right. So by definition, that means it could come from any tribe. Unless it says it, then it can't be a rule. Yeah, but was not King David lineage chosen as the royal priesthood, according to scripture? It doesn't say that. I mean, I think you're quoting... No, well, no, no, sorry. No, no, no sorry. Uh, I quoted it wrong. Um, does not it say that King David was chosen as the begotten son, more specifically. Can you say it again? Well, he was chosen as what? what? The begotten son. What do you mean by begotten son? Just think of like, what verse you're referring to. Because begotten... Uh, apo apologies, apologies. Are you guys hearing noises in the background of my of my... My um, my my audio. No, it's okay. I hear you clearly. Yep. I just don't know what you mean by begotten. I know Christians use that word begotten, but what does that mean to you? Okay. Well, according to scripture, begotten means 
chosen according to scripture meaning chosen of oh i choose you for this i begot you as this this is what you are being chosen for and nothing else that's what begotten means according to that's scripture not what beget means in english though beget is to to like to become to to be a father or mother of somebody that's what it means in english so if you mean the chosen son that's a different mean, a word not chosen and begotten are not the same thing right okay so what does begotten mean as this is a question for, for um the um asha um hmm. what does begotten mean according to hebrew what's the hebrew word for it i mean give me a yeah, what's the word to citing i mean begotten means a parentage that's what to beget means it's parentage of somebody, but what verse are you uh, referring to? I uh, can't recall the exact verse. I know it's in Psalms. Psalms 1, I think it's, um, I can't recall the exact, I, I, I don't want to misquote, because that, that may be bearing false witness or some sort of one of it. But um, I know it's according to scripture, it says that you, I have chosen you as the begotten son. All right, so in Hebrew, yeah. I'll tell you, in Hebrew, it's the word yalad, which means to be, um, like, born from. So it's the same thing as in English. I mean, to give birth to or, or to, like, bring about something. You know, so I know in Christianity, begotten, it sounds, like, very regal and, and archaic, right? Like, oh, you know, begotten son, it's probably, like, like I mean, some sort of man child or, like, God child. Uh, but it just means, like... A child, I mean, it's almost like redundant, you know, like a begotten son. It's like your child who's your son, right? Or a son you gave birth to. Oh, so in that definition, you mean that if even though I make a son, I could adopt another son and give him my son that I bear from my loins, I can give the inheritance to an adopted son. That's what you're saying in definition. All I did was define the word yalad. Here, here, here. I mean, it's like a yalda, like a little baby. It, it, I, it just means like, but to give birth to. I mean, that's all it means. You know, in terms of adopting someone. That... Apologies. Apologies. No. My dog. My dog went off. No, it's fine. It's fine. Apologies again. Give me 10 seconds. No, I don't mind your dog. I like dogs. Yeah. I don't see the connection that David is considered to be God. And I mean, assuming, I'm pretty sure it may appear like this in the Psalms or something. But I don't know what's the correlation with Jesus. Only because the word begotten, I mean, that God gave his only begotten son. That means God gave his only, you know, the only child he ever gave birth to. No, wait. I have a better question. The, yeah. Instead of me trying to explain myself, do you believe in the New Testament as a as a child of like the you're you're Jewish, right? So yeah. do you believe in the New Testament? No. Well, right. Okay. So therefore, I, I'm trying to say in Old Testament because New oh, Testament is redundant. Yeah, New Testament is kind of pointless trying to explain New Testament. So let's say in Old Testament. Um, according to According to Old Testament, does not all what was not the the uh, yes I know that King Saul was the first king according to the Book of Kings. However, does not it refer to King David as the king that the Most High is himself chosen as the begotten son? That that's what I'm trying to ask. I, I it might I mean. I don't know what your question is. Is David called begotten? I mean, possibly. I mean, what's... No, no. They, okay, better than that. Is being a human being right now in this part that mm -hmm. lives for like 100... The most we might live is 120 years. Is it... Yeah. Does it matter if I am a king and I live for 120 years or does it matter if my lineage more important than how long I live? 
Are you gonna matters to whom? Yeah. For what purpose? Well, a king's purpose is to make the world better in a way. Correct? No. Where do you get that from? Oh, well, I would. I, this is not me using scripture, but I would say as common sense, as a ruler of a nation of people, your job is to make things better for the people that you protect. Oh, no, that's correct. not what uh, any king ever did. The kings are not. The Would you take a bribe if you have a power? If you have the power of a nation of people. Would you take bribes? I would, I would, I would, I would never take bribes because that are good. Um, um, okay. Better oh, example. Is, no, better that example. That no, wait, no, before you respond to me, before you respond to me, King Leonidas, which was a real person, how, um, therefore, did he take bribes from any nation? I'm sure he did. What, you think just because you saw movie 300, so you think that that's a real story? Come on. Like, no, open no, 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 the world I'm doesn't... Not I'm not here to bash, bro. I'm not here to bash. I'm just asking. Did you think King Leonidas was a real person? He was a real king. He who was not, he was not a real person. Now, hang on a second, bro. Educate us first. Who is King Leonidas? Well, okay, the, the movies have it. The movies have it right up to a point. King Leonidas was a king of a small kingdom, according to according to history. He was not was as powerful as much. Sparta. Sparta was a real place in. Um, I haven't done the full research, but I know this. Greece. So you're talking. Is, you're talking is, about. You're talking about. I know who you're talking about. You're talking about the um, the king that went into um, uh, the wilderness and went into the cold area, right, to go and um, uh, kill a wolf and then go speak no, to No, 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 bro, 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 you're sound like a troll. About to bro, you're sound like a troll right now. You're sound nah, like... Bro, that's you, Sparta, you, bro, that's Sparta. No, bro, you, you're so... I, I can see why the bro say that you're a troll. I'm, talk, I'm not talking movie. I'm talking history. The real history, not just what I think or what I believe. I'm talking about the history that actually ex uh, actually happened. Because King Leonidas was a real king. Don't try to troll me. Just be honest for a moment. I know your job is to be a troll, but just be honest for a moment. Just I don't know explain. Who King Leonidas is, bro. That's me being honest. Okay. Oh, well, then, okay, I agree. I agree with what you're saying then. If you don't know who King Leonidas was, he was a real king. He was the king of Sparta. Sparta was a, it was a part of Greece, which Greece is a part of, well, um, the European, well, mm -hmm. nation, or whatever the case is. That is what Greece is part of. He was a king of ancient times. I can't specify the timings of 1500 years, a thousand years, or whatever the case might be. I can't specify it. However, I could spec I could talk about the things that he did, and he could not be bought as a king, because he is for his people other than being for money or wealth. That's not who he is. A king is supposed to be for his people first. And that's who King Leonidas was. Andre. Hey, Andre, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Speak. Okay. Are you, you, you like Bible, right? You're familiar with the scriptures? Yes, I am. Will you take the word of God uh, as a description of kings? Yes, I do. Okay. So... First book of Samuel, chapter 8, verse 10 through 22, is how God describes kings. You can go read it if you want. Let me tell you, let me tell you how I describe a king. Forget about how God describes it. All right? The way that I describe um, First off, Gabuchi, Gabuchi, Gabuchi. If you know you're going to, if you know you're going to bash the most I go on, it's better you remain silent than speak because I will bash on you as much as you try to bash on the most I got. Because I can come for you right. without, without okay. script. Let me read it. Let me read the I verses. Love, I Since I gave the verse, let me read it. Okay? But what let is it? Ruben, it. before you read it, before you read it, right? No, Gabucci, you're just going to make up some BS like you always do. It's I'm okay. not going to make up no BS. I'm not going to make up no BS. But, but check this. Our definition of who a king is matters. Yes, and uh, I'm okay. Here, thank you, Asher. So uh, Samuel eight, 
First Samuel 8, verses 10 through 22. So it says, And Samuel told all the words of God of people who were asking him for the king. And he said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. He will appoint himself commanders of thousands and fifties and so on. Some will plow his, his ground and reap his harvest to make his implements of war and equipments of the chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vine, eh, vineyards and olive orchards and give it to his servants. He will take the tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and to his servants. He will take your male servants and your female servants and the best of young men and your donkeys and put them to work. He will take the tents of your flock and you shall be his slaves. And uh, on this day you will cry out because you're, uh, of your king to whom you are chosen for yourself, but the Lord will not answer you on this day. This is God telling you that no matter what king you pick, the kings will always be bad because the only king is God, no, no one else. Okay. You don't need rulers. Okay, but um, before I respond to that, you dropped Gubuchi? Yes, yeah, I... because he's just trolling. I, I sense the humor in what he's about to say, but he was funny in a way, but um, I, I respect why you drop him. He should be dropped. Um, no, let me respond to brother. What is it, bro? Ruvan? Ruvan? Ruvan. Okay, Ruben. Ruvan. If, if you read Bible, yeah. you should know that that's the first son of Yaakov. Yeah, yes. Okay. That's what the most I res um, says that that's what the kings will be. However, he was not responding to the kings that he was trying to create, was he? He was talking about the kings of the earth that was already existing, which is the kings of um, the Canaanites, the Havites, and the, the no. Moabites, all of these. No, no, because these no, kings... Who is king, he talking to? This is no, prophet. King, no, he was talking to... This is prophet to, Samuel. Hold no, on. he was this talking to... Samuel, this is prophet yes, Samuel. Yes, he was talking to prophet Samuel. This is yes. prophet Samuel. Let me finish my, what I'm saying. Sorry. This is prophet Sorry. Samuel bringing a message of God to the uh, children of Israel who ask for a human king. But God doesn't yes. make it the same in kings. Now, he says that if you want a king, you shall pick the one he elects or vice versa. Meaning, if you want, that means if you really want one, then he'll give you one. But he's telling you, this is what kings will do. And this is what David did. I mean, this is... I mean, David killed people to take their wives, right? So in some way, David fulfilled this, this formula of kings. I mean, it's not like a non sequitur. I mean, it's, it's not too, you know, only because he liked David doesn't mean that he didn't prefer Israel to exist just without a middleman, right? That's the ideal. But if you really want a king, then God will supply a king. That's the argument, or that's the... the the statement there, yeah. Hello? Hello? I agree, 50, I agree 50%. Go on, with, go on. With the, with the, uh, yeah, what Ash has said. I agree. No, no, but, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I agree with 50% of what you said. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I mean, this is what the Torah, uh, this is what the Bible says. Whether you agree or not, you can deny that this is the trend that that kings typically misbehave. As much as God liked King David, he would rather us not have a middleman between us and God. That's what it says. This is why there's no commandment to have a king. It says that if you want a king, if you want to be like all the nations of the world, then you shall elect the king that God chooses. Right. That, But only if you want a king. So that's basically saying that if you don't want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, because you rather go straight to God, you're free to. Wait, wait, wait. No, you just said Jesus. Right. No, because you believe Jesus in some way is an archetype of King David, right? I mean, you're doing this to justify Jesus as a king, right? No, 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 no. I have, no, we're not conversating New Testament. We're talking Old Testament. I know, but I know the agenda here, clearly. But when you say you're not... No, no, okay. My, uh, bro, brother, I will I will be honest with you. I will not go into New Testament. This has nothing to do with New you Testament. Know, wait, wait, hold on. 
by the simple fact that you're saying that you're convinced 50% means that the New Testament has your other 50%, right? It's not because of the literal text of the Jewish Bible, because it's a bit, you know, I mean, it's pretty one-sided. It's telling you a descriptive term of what kings do and why it's better not to have a king, right? If you're not convinced, it's because you're viewing these verses with Christian lenses. That's, that's the point. This is why I have to bring up the New Testament, because I'm kind of bringing up what's pouring poison into your ear. That's it. I, okay, I, I, I get what you're trying what you're trying to see. But I do not agree with what you're trying to say because I do not okay, it's like this. If I'm I, if I'm saying I'm discussing Old Testament, therefore I will not go into New Testament. I will not put the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as my savior and all these things. I would use Solomon, David, and the lineage of that. I will not go above or beyond that. I will talk about Solomon and David and, and his lineage. I will not talk no more. I will not go into New Testament. I will talk about Malachi. I will talk about the prophets. I will not talk about any other other than them. Hold on. I mean, you're a little, I'm sorry, but like a little long-winded. Just what's your point? Because there's other people. So we can't be stuck on this topic, I mean, for more than 20 minutes. And we've already been talking about this for 20 minutes. And it's kind of like you keep on just changing the point and moving the goalpost. Right. I, I mean, first you went from the God and son to this and that. And you're just trying to prove something that doesn't literally appear in our Bible. I understand you believe in an additional work called the New Testament. And this is what's fueling, you know, your your generous attempt to offer us your rendition of God's will on this planet. Right. But it doesn't appear in our Bible. It's just not literally there. So it's hard for us to believe that God's going to punish us for for something that doesn't literally appear in our Bible. It's, it's just not literally. By the simple fact that you're trying to connect the dots in such a weird way, right, it means it's not explicit. If it's not explicit, how can a good God punish us for not believing what's not explicit? God said explicitly, he will bless us or curse us on the basis of keeping laws. Okay? If you try to keep God's law, uh, then you will have rain in its season, you will have peace. And there's been times that Israel had peace, that they were redeemed. You know, so it shows that we could in some way keep the law enough to please God. That's all that's explicit in terms of heaven, hell, Messiah, human sacrifice. This is these are later developed ideas, later developed ideas. God forbid that he should punish us for for something that doesn't appear in our Bible. Right. Doesn't just it's it, put yourself in our position. OK, I mean, it, I mean, it's like someone arguing with that the Quran is true and the Muhammad is the final messenger. Right. But it doesn't literally appear in the New Testament. You know, but they're saying, no, no, I'm going to prove it from the New Testament through foreshadowings and through secrets and riddles. You know, it's just, you know. My, my, my bro, my bro, my bro, brother Asher, um, yeah. I have not used the New Testament as my my standpoint. And I have not used Torah, um, Quran. I'm trying to stick in Old Testament, which, which you guys know. Yeah, but I'm, not, believe- I'm not trying to justify yeah, but- myself through those. Uh- Sorry. Really, okay. You believe in Jesus, okay? That whole this yes. character doesn't it's you know exist in our Bible. You're trying to in some way amplify, embellish the name of Jesus to people who don't see him literally in in our scripture. And even I'll tell I have you, not mentioned Jesus. No, I know you didn't mention, <laughs> but the whole theme is around it. You know, I mean, it, I mean, it's a bit of tr- was it. I have spoken of King David and King oh. Solomon. <laughs> the reason that you were making a big deal about God's only begotten son is because Jesus is called God's begotten son. And you're like, oh. But David was David was the first begotten son, wasn't he not? No, actually. You know, because begotten just means that God created you. We're all God's begotten children. Yeah. I, I, I have a daughter. She's my begotten daughter. I think Asher has some kids. They're also his begotten kids. So what? Yeah, it. You see, so you're pushing an agenda, fine, but it's just not clear in our text. You know, I wish it was for your sake, right? I mean, it, I mean, I think my life will be easier as a Christian, <laughs> right? I, in terms of likability, I mean, I have a lot more friends in my religion if I was Christian than if I was Jewish. Fine, but it's just not there. You know, and and it's just not there. I mean, I, I, and because it's not there, that should encourage you, you know, with all the torment 
that I go through in the Jewish world to join me, <laughs> to join me in keeping God's commandments and spreading his Torah and making new Jews, no matter how wacky Jews behave towards you. Okay, that I mean, that's it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, then, give me the message you're trying to spread then, because I see that my point will, will not get across. I'm not you, you, to drop you should keep all the laws. That's the message. Yeah, keep laws. I to agree. Make to ethical, I agree. moral right? And identifies Israel. That means when you do laws, do them because God told you to do them, right? And and let people know that the reason you're such a good person is because you follow an ethical God. That's it. But that includes ceremonial laws also, like keeping the Sabbath, you know, no pork, and uh, along with all the ethical laws as well, which I'm sure... Like we have you fringes and um, like... Like being respectable for your children, um, teaching your children the laws and all of these things. Does that's law according to scripture, right? But, but there's no law to treat your kids right, unfortunately. <laughs> no. You know, but there's a lot. You know what? You know what? Since you're since you're a child of ah, sure. That means therefore you would know the law. Let's let's talk law for a minute. What do you think? What'd you say? Yeah, let's talk. Go for it. Hold on. Yeah, are are you are you going to actually ask him about a law because you want to keep it, or are you trying to challenge him for something? Because this is no, a weird no. conversation. God forbid I challenge a a, a, a child of Asha on the law. I'm a he should know the law. He should know the law at the back of his head. All right, go for it. Go for it. Right. I'm just going random. I'm just just, just remember that you said no, right? Just remember you said no. No way. Yeah, I did. Well, I did not say no, but I did say I will not challenge him. Yes, I did not. No, I did will not challenge. Him. So okay, so let's see because there's ten commandments, right? There are ten commandments apply to everybody. Hey, you could challenge no. me. No, Guys, no, no. Like, follow the show. Like and follow the host and the show. Okay, go for it. No, Make I just want him to be honest. No, I, I, he can challenge, yeah, but I want him to be honest about his goal, right? He said that no. he wanted to learn oh. law. Now, if he's going to be here and doing it for a different reason because he wants to prove that you're wrong, that would mean that he lied about it, so he violated the Ten Commandments. So I just want him to be honest with his conversation. You're so Jewish. That's, that, that, sounds, that, sounds, that sounds fair. I agree with that. If I do challenge... If I do try to dis like um disprove what the brother Asher thinks, the whole thing, I chat. I, I cha the whole for this whole conversation that involved me, the portions that involved me was in some way to catch me, which is fine, you know. But it's not like it's anything new. Yeah, but just hurry up, yeah, you know, because we have other people. <laughs> oh, there's a topic. You, you know what? No, yeah. no, no. You know what? I'm not here to be. Uh, a, a conversation of topic and be provoking and all of these things. I'm just here to have a conversation. If other people want to come out to the topic, then let them. I have no problem with that. I could drop down right now. It's not a problem for me. Mm. All right. Because it's a conversation. I already follow you. I will be in the comment section. It's not a problem okay. for me. All right. So go to the comment section. I mean, thank you for stopping by. You know, uh, consider yeah. becoming Israel. I committing yourself to Torah observance. Dropping Jesus is optional from my perspective. I don't really, I don't think God cares who you think the Messiah is. I think it's better if you do, but it's, you know, I mean, we'll take you with Jesus and all. We want you on our okay. side, especially you're, you're, you're a soldier, right? Even though you're, you're, I don't know. I mean, I think you'd be more effective with uh, like a Jewish rifle than a Christian one. But uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, respect, respect. Cool. Where do you live? All right, uh you're in Trinidad? Yeah, I live in... Yeah, oh, of course. You saw the comment section. Everybody knows the accent. Yeah, well, I mean, I, just, I, mean, I heard the accent. No, but, uh... no you, you saw the accent. You did not hear the accent. Trust me on that. <laughs> oh, no, I heard the accent. This is why from the beginning I asked you, like, but you don't sound like you're from Brazil. Okay, fine. No, uh... my, 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 no my father is from Brazil. I am born in Guyana, and I grew up. I spent most of my years in Trinidad, so mm. I learned the Trinidadian accent. Mm. 
Okay. Anywho, I'll be in the comment section. Respect and do your thing, Asha. And Respect. I'll I'll I just comment. I just okay, give comment. Okay, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Cool. So, guys, I'm shopping for a car. In case anyone in South Florida, this car is so hard to find. I'm looking for a 370Z. Okay. For some reason, there's only two on the market here. Stick shift. That's what I need to do. Like a like a podcast about cars and motorcycles. Because this is what I'm into them. What do you think about that car, Ruben? Are you like a station? I don't wagon? know. I, it, it all depends on what the, uh, like. You know, it's funny because I am in the automotive industry for half my life, but I get the cheapest cars just to get me from A to Z because I don't care. Wow. I, I guess I'm spending so much time with cars that I don't care about them. All right. Tell me that you're Jewish by not telling me that you're Jewish. I'm kidding. Exactly. <laughs> no, if you were Jewish, you'd be driving uh, well, a minivan. You know, that's like in the yeshiva's... Whatever. We don't like, have that many kids. Everyone. Well, they do it like hopefully. I mean, yeah. I've never seen a whatever. Yeah, but and I'm I'm not Hasidic. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. All yeah. right. So let's see. Yeah, so I mentioned last time briefly about the idea of grace, right? It just popped into my head dialoguing with this very nice Christian. I think Andre is a very nice person, you know, and I don't think that we're we're thankful enough as Jewish people to be surrounded by such ethical, caring Christians. I mean, these Christians actually care for you, right? Now, I'm not saying every Christian throughout Jewish history, but 370 are bad and not in a good way. So why are they bad? What are you talking about? All right, someone in the comment doesn't like my 370Z. I don't know. Yeah, anyways. I like Hondas because they last forever. Yeah, well, I mean, Nissan's also... Uh, I, I used to work for Nissan. They're crap. I have a few cars here. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, what? I spent yeah. like seven years working for Nissan. They they make really bad quality. Interesting. Huh. All right. Toyota's uh, good quality, but Toyota is really clunky. It's like really rough drive. You know, they're they're not focused on uh, enjoyable ride. They're more focused on quality. Honda is has a good balance of you you enjoy driving it and it's uh, amazing quality. Yeah, but they're played out. Everyone's got a Honda. Uh, I don't care. I have an FJ Cruiser. Like my wife has a Miata. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a Mini Cooper that's kind of a girly car and a bunch of motorcycles. And now I'm going to get a 370Z just for a daily ride. Yeah, because I'm going to get in South Florida, people don't drive well. And to be on a motorcycle every day is not, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be doing my lives from hospitals soon. Motorcycles but yeah, are fun, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's my thing. So the notion of grace in Christianity, I mean, people think that grace came into the world through Jesus. But grace is, is really, that's what exists between a parent-child relationship. No one walks around tormenting their, their baby for misbehaving, right? They're a baby. They're, you created this child. This child didn't ask to be born. Um, that's what grace is. That child doesn't know any better. All right. Uh, however, you still care for it. Um, and you give it at least from a grand scale legal perspective, something they don't deserve, but like from the perspective of, of you forcing it into existence, uh, it does deserve it. So this is why this notion of grace is not really what what is seen in in the Bible. God, you know, we deserve God's grace. Meaning, if it, God knows that we can't be perfect, and He made us this way, so it's not called grace; it's called justice. And I think if people started judging their rendition of God from the same ethics that claims to come from God, perhaps they'd be able to choose a better religion, right, would leave unethical Islam or unethical Christianity, right, meaning I like ethical Christianity and ethical Islam, right, and, uh, but I dislike any unethical form of, of any religion, including Judaism, right, there are unethical streams of Judaism, 
right? I mean, I think the reform movement exists as a as a wing of the Democratic Party, and they push like very unethical ideas. But uh, yeah. Anyways, but I think that's just mercy, right? Uh, or you know, we have that same concept that it says justice, justice, right? That says twice. Justice for a reason because it's you know it's not yeah. just justice by law but it's justice based on reality of life right just because somebody stole a loaf of bread you don't punish him maybe he was starving and he needed that food so you can't just punish him you should actually help him even though he broke the law right yeah. so that's the term in Hebrew it says sedek sedek tirdof said uh, justice justice you shall pursue. So, I mean, was the Simcha saying, what, reform? Okay, I'm sure there are, there are people who, who are great in the reform movement and there are horrible people like in the Orthodox movement. But being that the reform movement has probably come out towards um, this whole transgender thing and, and almost encouraging children or, uh, to take hormone blockers and all this stuff means that they're pushing weird ideas. Right? And, and so it's... They support everything the left supports. I mean, by definition. So this is why. Now, clearly, they're 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 ethical ideas that come from a reform movement, but perhaps they shouldn't align themselves so politically with things that are antithetical to the Torah. So that's my point. Anyways, I think on that note. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go sleep also. Yeah, I don't want to make these lives super long. What's a noide? Okay, I'm going to just say it quick. All right, so a noide is someone who's expected to keep seven laws. Every Gentile, by definition, according to Jewish law, is a noide. Um, and they're judged according to the standard of seven laws of Noah. Hold on, someone else. Somebody wants to come on here. Oh, no. I mean, Simcha wants to come on. All right, Simcha, next time, next time. No, no. All right, She's good night. very nice, you know, so... Here, look, there's Orthodox Jews who do a lot of bad also. Like any Orthodox Jew who believes in missing converts or, I don't know, not accepting converts or being ethnical, like ethnocentric, I think is doing wrong. Uh, or, or I don't know, like who believes that Gentiles are intrinsically impure or doing wrong. So there, there's wrong to go around. It's just as a policy, the reform movement pushes everything the left pushes. And, and there's a lot of left-wing ideas, the bulk, almost all of them, that harm this planet. So this is why. Yeah, so a Noahid is someone who keeps... Gentiles are meant to keep the Noahid laws, right? I believe that you should put that aside and just become Jewish. But if you don't want to become Jewish, nor Christian, nor Muslim, then just remain a Noahid. Uh, okay, would you convert a trans to Orthodox? Whoa, that's hard. That's hard. It, it, it's an actual Torah prohibition to, to be trans. Um, at least regarding clothing. Uh, you know, it's not a, a Torah pro prohibition to be a homosexual, like if if uh, you're not sleeping with the opposite sex necessarily, but it's it's it, it's a problem, no. no it doesn't, it also, doesn't it also say that somebody who uh, basically like remove their ability to reproduce cannot be accepted into assembly of God? And do not me. That's a good one. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it says that he can't be a priest, but I don't know if it says... No, no, it says he cannot be accepted into assembly of God. I'll have to find a verse for you. Yeah, so according to Jewish law, when that statement says can't be accepted into assembly of God, doesn't mean they can't convert. It means they can't marry into the Jewish people. So um, I have to find that verse, I mean, to see what... It's in the Deuteronomy. I can't yeah. remember which. Same thing chapter. about Moabites. Uh, and, uh, so it means that if they convert, they can only marry converts or, or like mamzerim, like uh, mamzers. Uh, I guess bastards, whatever. I mean, I don't even know what's a good translation for mamzer. But it's never meant that according to Jewish law, that they can't convert to Judaism. But, um, yeah, that they just can't marry into the community. That's how Halakha says it, but I'm curious. Um, I mean, someone who, what, castrates himself? Can't, can't? Yeah, it says they crushed his manhood with a rock. That's little, like, the, the words it uses. 
Intentionally? Oh, well, yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. I'll, let me, if you want to got... wait, I can find it. It's in Deuteronomy. I can spend five minutes and find it. Okay. Anyways. All right. Show me next time. Okay. We'll All do right. it next time. <laughs>